Good morning. What annoys me about some physicists is that they think that they are experts of every academic discipline, experts in philosophy of life and existence, often also morality. But it is true that physics answers many questions and that those questions are fundamental. In principle, other processes are reducible to the processes that science describes as atoms and quarks. This here, this process, is in principle reducible to physics. Because this process, my experience, those trees, those birds, that sky, all the automobiles, that are driving farther away with the combustion engines. It's all physics, or rather physical. This is physical. This experience here is physical. There is plenty of evidence for that. So there are reasons to think that physics or physical is fundamental. There are good reasons to say that everything is physical. <laughs> but what is physical? This is physical, this experience of the light that I see. This experience is physical. Those shades of green that I see, this is physical. That blue shade of the sky is physical. How I experience it, my experience is physical. But the problem with some physicalists or physicists when they start doing philosophy, is that they often seem to mistake the map for the territory. They often seem to think that physics is the ultimate objective truth. Although it is only a picture of reality, a picture of this. And what I mean by this here now is this experience, that light that is shining from behind the trees. The physicalist says that this experience is a neural process. The details don't matter. What matters is that it is a physical process. It's in principle reducible to basic constituents of matter. 
these sounds, that singing of the birds that I hear now, is reducible in principle to physics, fundamental physics of, of atoms and quarks and so on. How can that be? That sound I hear is an atomic process. Or, I mean, constituted by atoms. It means that whatever it is that science models as atoms and as quarks, whatever it is out there, that thing in itself that underlies our observations of atoms, that thing in itself is what constitutes this experience. Experience of the shades of green in that tree and that blue hue, blueness of the sky. If you watched those, uh, experienced those sensations, they are made of atoms, more precisely, whatever it is that science models as atoms. And I agree with the physicalist that you don't need anything else We just have to remember that physics merely models reality of which I am part of. Reality which I cannot know beyond the scientific observations and models except for my own case because I am it. It is this. Those shades of blue. It is important to remember that this is not about introspection. It's not about making some positive claims about experiences to say that they are qualitative or that they include qualia or intrinsic properties or anything like that. And most importantly, to say that I know what matter is through being it, so that I can say that matter is this, when it is in this configuration of this Homo sapiens here. In this form, matter is this. I know what matter is in this case, but it is ineffable because I cannot exhaustively describe what this is. <laughs> Science describes what this is and the descriptions of science are good. To say that they would be true sounds a bit too philosophical and problematic, because what, what is truth? <laughs> but I like this no miracles argument that if the scientific models were not, in some sense, if they did not approximate reality, 
then it would be a miracle that they work, that we can fly to the moon by using them and create microwave ovens and combustion engines that I hear there, or that we could genetically modify that tree. So I agree with the physicist and physicalist, but I want to add this extremely important limitation of physics and science generally. And that limit is the model. Science cannot step beyond its observations and models of reality. It merely models objects based on how they affect us human observers and our measuring devices. We cannot know through science what that thing in itself is that causes our observations. In a world, in a universe, where there would be no human agents, scientists, what would the atom be? What is the atom when no one models it as an atom? This is a mystery, but in this case of my own experience, even if I didn't know anything about atoms, I could have this same experience here, experience of that light, those shades of blue, those clouds traveling there slowly, that shade of green, it's all ineffable. The poets, I will leave it to them to describe it, if it's description at all, maybe it's only producing sensations in the people who are listening. Even if I didn't know that atoms exist, even if I didn't know that brains exist, I would have this experience. And it would still apply, it would be in a sense true, that this experience is made of atoms. But I would not be able to make that statement, but still it would be in a sense true. <laughs> and in that sense I would know something of atoms, even if I would not have the concept of atom. I would know that... No, forget, forget about that. That leads us astray. So I, I agree with the physicalist. I am a physicalist. That everything is made of atom atoms. Everything is made of matter. Everything is made of physical. It's just that there is a sense in which we don't know through science alone what matter is. Because this is matter. The physicalist says that this experience here is material. It is a physical process, and I agree about this. I don't deny this. But, as various philosophical thought experiments demonstrate, you cannot infer from scientific descriptions the existence of subjective experiences, the existence of phenomenal consciousness, you cannot infer from science what this feels like, 
this experience. And that shows how science is limited. It is limi limited to modeling and no one ever has claimed that the business of science is anything but modeling. So this is not a problem for physicalism. It's kind of trivial that science merely models objects and we kind of know the things in themselves that underlies our models and observations. But nevertheless this is like extremely important and it is brought forth by the case of consciousness. Basically all philosophers agree. Basically everyone agrees who has thought about this matter in sufficient detail. They agree that you cannot infer what experiences feel like, what experiences really are from scientific descriptions. Because the mod uh, descriptions are just abstract models of reality and the experience is concrete reality. It's this. <laughs> and why is this important? Why, why do I think that this is so extremely important? Why is it so extremely important to notice that science is merely a picture of reality, whereas consciousness, this experience here, is part of the concrete reality in itself. I think it's important because no one wants to live in Plato's cave and look at the shadows on the wall and think that they are the true re reality. Because that is what some physicists and physicalists think. They mistake the scientific models for concrete reality. They fail to see that there is something beyond the scientific observations and models. And what, what is it there that underlies the models? It is this 